Hello. Hi. I waited until Allie took a sip of her lemon water to do that. You did. I did. Welcome perfect. back at long last to Wheel Takes, a podcast about the Wheel of Time, a series of fantasy novels by Robert Jordan, which Brandon Sanderson helped finish. I'm Gus, and I left the uh, air filter on. <laughs> And I'm Allie, and I am on a uh, first-time reader on book nine, chapter prologue. Chapter prologue, but only the first half of it. Mm-hmm. This podcast only contains spoilers for what Allie's already read. And again, today, that is the first half of the prologue of Winter's Heart, which is called Snow. And when I say first half, I mean the first two point of views. So, uh, Shayna and Elaine. Uh, yeah. Allie. Yeah. How's it going? It's, it's good. It's yeah. good. I, um, I had a really long week, so I'm really tired. Um, and then I accidentally kind of had some caffeine today, which gave me a little <laughs> bit of a panic attack. So if I'm weird today, that's why. That I'm will just, happen. Like, I'm fucking weird today. It anyway, is fun. It's been fun. Allie, I have some good news. What? We have someone to thank. Really? We have a hearty thank you to Hannah G, who bumped up to the bubbly tier. Hannah G, I'm way too caffeinated for this. <laughs> Just like a, a mollifying basket. <laughs> you are woven together by both your past, your present, and your future to create someone extraordinary. Mm -hmm. You are full of knowledge and wisdom and experience, but also joy. And you are also a means of organizing the chaos around us. And for that, we thank you. And thanks for being a part of this community. Thanks, Hannah G. And thanks, as always, to all of our very generous patrons. You're all very sweet, and we're very grateful to you for your S kindness. Seriously. I just remember back to the days where you were like, let's start a podcast. And I was like, who would listen to that? And now look at us. Yeah. I'm just... It's just I, fun. I, I just, I love being proven wrong over and over Isn't again. Isn't it great? I just, I've been learning. I just need to have more confidence. As someone who just finished The Hunger Games after getting a bunch of shit wrong, I, I know exactly how good it feels to realize that you're wrong about stuff over and over again. <laughs> Very fun. Uh, by the way, if you didn't know this... That I'm wrong about stuff? No, you just said I love being proven wrong. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Well, you weren't even wrong. Like, you had some bunch incredible of predictions. Yeah, but I was also wrong about... It was great. It was good fun. You had incredible predictions. I was yeah. sitting there, like, trying to keep my face straight. Now you know how I feel. Well, now you know how I feel. There you go. Um, it's been an exercise in empathy. Allie, here's my question. Mm. Where did we leave off? God, I have no fucking idea. Um, oh, Perrin's wife got kidnapped. Fael got kidnapped, and Egwene portaled her way to Tarvalon to begin the siege. I hate that I called her Perrin's wife. I don't know why you did I that. I hated that. Yeah, I'm not sure I why. Hate. Because he says it all the time. He's like, my, my wife. wife. It's very That's proprietary. True. As as two of the, the big Fail boosters in the community, I feel like you and I are I am. I, quite I fond am. of her. Well, here's my thing. I'm in not fond ways. of her all the time. I'm not fond of any character in this series all the time. Moraine is standing right there. Nah. Caroline Damadred is She's standing fine. right there. She's fine. She gets a pass. Yeah, so far has not pissed me off one bit. <laughs> but everyone else... Takes their turn in the hot seat. But um I think I think I I think for me, my thing is I'm like I recognize parts of my former youthful self in her in like the cringy bullshit that I would do back <laughs> then and sometimes still get into not the spouse hitting or anything no, like no, that, but the that. like the the mind game stupidity. That was me when I was younger and being like, ah, he needs to know what I want out of this marriage. Well, not marriage because we weren't married then. But not at the time. He needs to know what I want out of this relationship without me telling him. 
what I want out of this relationship. And I think that's like one of the worst things we've ever done to people. Yeah. Is it's being bad. like, ah, read the your perfect mind. person should be able to read your mind at all times and know exactly what you want from them. I did appreciate that uh, Jordan went out of his way to go, oh, no, yeah, actually, sorry, that is bad in the prologue of book eight. That was well done. When we what? were with Tenobia, and Tenobia was like, Saldeans have some really toxic relationship dynamics they really do but i also think that it, it was a gross misunderstanding of her parents marriage oh i like agree she did not understand what makes that relationship work mm, yeah. at all am i wrong though also no. saw the end customs are a little toxic. six of one half a it's, dozen of the other it's yes the answer is yes ally we've got winter's heart here this is the ninth book <laughs> in the wheel of time it's a beefy boy sorry it's it's thick king, but is it actually? Because it's uh, what is it? Seven hundred and seven hundred and sixty six pages. A mere seven hundred and sixty six pages. I feel like we've read books thicker than that. Lord of Chaos was over a thousand. I think Shadow Rising wow. also was. Thick uh, kings. Fires of Heaven was at least eight hundred, I believe. Wow. This one is uh, mid mid length. I'd say you'll notice it's the thicker paper. Ah, as well. the they did thicker the thicker paper. paper. That, uh, Path of Daggers had. Uh, here's the the Daryl K. Sweet cover art. Uh huh. What do you think? Um, let me look. Oops, I'll sorry. tell you who that guy in the middle is if you don't care to guess. I think it's Perrin. It's Perrin. Yeah, it looks like Perrin to me with Gaul. That is Gaul. Yeah, looks like Gaul to me. Was that Moraine with the? Well, look at the banner behind her. <laughs> Oh, is it barreling? Yes. <sighs> so that's what the hottest woman looks like to Daryl? Yeah. Well, you know, it, <laughs> she's not a horse, so he didn't know what to do. <laughs> I mean, it's not... I mean, she's not... Like, she's not ugly. I just... She's just not really a human being. She's a she face. She doesn't look like a person. No. Um, She's not ugly. I'm just like, okay... I mean, listen, when you say about something, this is the thing, and I worry for the actors that will play Gallad and Berlaine. I mean, not the actor that will play Gallad, because I feel like people are just a lot meaner to women. But I feel like That's the true. women that play Lanfear and Berlaine, I'm just waiting for the day someone comes up and is like, she's not that hot. Oh, I'm sure it's going to happen. Oh, impossible. We, we, it'll definitely happen. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to be something. Are you, but, are you sick? Is everything all right? I am having an allergy attack oh. like no one's business. Could you maybe go clear? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, it's been, it, I'm like having a really bad time. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right. She's got allergy medication. It'll <sighs> it'll take effect. Uh, we've also got this man. This, uh, if you, Is if that you, Elias yeah. Mature? Maybe. <laughs> it might also be Seven Bolwer. Oh, I forgot about him. Because he's just kind of there. I'll be honest. I did not remember. He was with that because yeah. it feels like, excuse me, a kind of random assortment it of is. human beings together. It is. Like, Morgays just happened upon them, and it just felt kind of like, oh, what? I think it was sort of Robert Jordan going, well, fuck it. They're not doing <laughs> anything. I'll put all them together, see what happens. You know what? Fuck it. Could be. Why not? Uh, now, this is what the people have been clamoring for. What? Last book. Famously, what? got a bingo. Yes. Oh, I'm excited about this. This book, will you get a bingo? I am not confident. Uh oh. Here's my thing. I know I'm in the slog, so I'm like, how much do I really? This is my thing. I have a lot of stuff I think is going to happen eventually, but will it happen in the slog? That's a good question. And that's been a really hard thing to pick. So I've been really kind of like stymied. It is difficult to say when things will happen in yeah. these middle books, yeah, right? So I mean, case in point, the Bowl of the Winds climactic scene being in, what, chapter five of last yeah. book? Yeah, he's been playing a little bit with the, with my feelings when it comes to the structure, because not like in a mean way, just in like a, or a bad way, just in like what I anticipate to be what he will do based on what I anticipate with structure he has been playing fast and loose with. Yes. So I'm a little like, I've got to relearn 
what he's doing. Yeah, I think my my dad I've mentioned before is a few chapters ahead of us, and I was talking to him, and he said, "Yeah, book eight just kind of ended." And I said, "I don't know. I thought there were a couple climactic moments." He was like, "Yeah, but it just kind of like the whole book felt like a bunch of people saying, "Oh, now we're gonna do this thing soon." That is that's true. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess the question then is, Allie, will we be seeing those things be done? Well, that's what I'm wondering, because I'm like, well, not too much. <laughs> because, I, and I think this is the the fans maybe influencing some of this, but I believe the slog ends next book? It depends on your definition. Most people say that the sloggiest books are 9 and 10. Okay. Some people extend it from 7 to 10. Uh-huh. Very few people include 11. One of them is me. I know. I liked. I liked last book. Don't get me wrong. I did too. I liked last. I liked a lot of parts of last book. I think there were some moments that kind of dragged, maybe a little bit. Sure. <laughs> Mostly in that, like they kept going, "We're gonna go in a month," and yeah. then I was like, Ro- "Robert, no, please." But um, my ADHD heart can't handle it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's the it's the it's the sudden shift. From very expected pacing in the first five books to to, to pacing that's to that's, very different pacing. That's very different. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, it's that's like the thing. it's like we suddenly shifted into like some kind of trochaic. Like if we're using music as a term, as a right trochaic, isn't that a uh, or no um, trochaic poetry? could be da 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 da. Yeah, it's kind of feeling that way as opposed to but um but um but um but um but um. Sure. I'm not not music. I meant uh, poetry. poetry as a as a form. So I'm trying to just figure out what this new form is. Um, so I kind of had to figure out like, okay, how much do I think actually could happen in the slog versus I have to fill out 25 things that I think could realistically happen. Sure. So I was like, okay. Um, did you bring? And I few, can't you... like, yeah, and I can't reuse very much. How many did you get to bring forward? Two, right? I think two. Um, so that's not very much. I had to make up then. And I got one free space. So I had to make up 22 things I think could happen. Right. Uh, all that to say, I think I think I may have may have landed on some things. Beautiful. So I will also generate this into a random bingo square. Yeah. Uh, card. And it'll be linked in the description. And there are ways for Allie to get to move spaces around throughout the book. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, we have... The evergreen problematic gender dynamics. The free space. space, yes. Swan and Gareth Bryn hook up. Mm. Uh, and then I put in parentheses barf. <laughs> um, now, I think Mar- I think Robert Jordan wants us to root for them. Um, so, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and respectfully, Bob, we can disagree. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that that could realistically happen because how long are we going to play this wash my underwear and get spanked game? Yeah, that feels like Maybe I'm just hoping that ends sooner rather than later. Aren't we all? Yeah. So I'm I'm hoping that that ends quickly. Um, And we get to the meat and potatoes. Because I do think... Because now I'm thinking about it and I'm like, okay, we're nearing... We're not at but we're nearing the ends of the books. And unless the last three books are just a fucking bloodbath, which I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are, right? But we do have to space things out a little. Yeah. Right? Like some people do have to die. I mean, look at Adelius, right? She's dead. And we've known her for a while now. We have. That was that was that was an exciting moment. Yes. I wasn't happy about it, but it was exciting. Um <sighs> So, you know, and maybe Van Dean killed her, in which case I will be insufferable. But would be. Um, I think I think also similarly, we can't have them all have love resolutions at the end. Right. No, we got to space them out a little bit. Yeah. And I do think that Swan and Gareth Brynn, eventually both of them are going to die. OK. And I think that could very well happen during the takeover, the Take over part two of the tower. The tower coup. Oh, sure, yeah, that would, that would be appropriate, right? That could be a, a place in which that happens. So I'm like, well, in that case, they got to get to making out because then we got to care that they both die, right? 
Because we probably don't have a lot of time until before the, the tower battle happens. I hope not. Yeah. We, well, she just, I mean, she just she went just through a portal there. and was like, we're going. Yeah. I mean, it'd be kind of hard to delay that. So I'm like, I mean, you know, maybe the siege is not particularly exciting, right? Like maybe they like try to starve yeah. them out for a while. That seems like something Robert would do to us. I suppose that that would be a realistic <laughs> siege, right? And he's like, let's make this as realistic yeah. as possible. <laughs> But um And now we're gonna camp here now for we're gonna camp six here. months. Um listen, let's do all, arts and crafts all, in the meantime. All due respect, it's just it's just my ADHD is like, wow. And when you have to do it this slowly. Yeah. It's really it's not aided by the fact that we have to read through so slowly. No, it's not. It's, but anyway, it's an artificial. I think way they to... gotta get to make an out because if they die during the tower siege thing, then we have to care. Yeah. So that's that's the first one. I should mention, uh, as far as Jordan was concerned, this was the uh, fourth to last book because he had every intention of resolving it after Knife of Dreams. Well, that's my other thing. Yeah. Is like he he thought this was close to the end. He thought this was very close to the end. Um, he was wrong. Yes. Um, which is fair. Uh, but he was very close to the end. In his mind. So he needed to, in his mind, maybe start kind of resolving some things a little bit. Sure. So why not them? Um, Tuan arrives. Here's my thought process. You brought process. that one forward? Yeah, here's all my right. thought process. Matt, I was not aided by the fact that Matt was yeah, not you under a wall for put, an entire book. put a lot of Abu Dar in your last bingo that, card, and every time you I'm said shocked. another one, I just cringed I'm a little. I'm shocked I got bingo. I was so proud when I'm you swapped those two squares. Because so much of it... Was freaking a Budar shit. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm thinking now we got to have some a Budar. Unfortunately, okay, yeah, we yeah, because I, I don't like Thailand and I I just don't like Thailand. Oh, this is a good time for me to mention the fuck that rule. Oh, uh, we, after some discussion online, it has been suggested that I give you an unlimited number of fuck that cards, mm -hmm. where if something comes up that we would have to unpack, but either you simply don't want to or we've already unpacked it, you can just play a fuck that card Yeah, and we don't have to do it. Yeah, I guess, you know what? Here's my thing. I like this. I like this when you brought this to me. Whoever yeah. suggested it, thank you. Because I have a feeling that Thailand is going to do more unpackable shit and there's just a certain extent to which I'm like, is there new ground to cover or can we just go see my deep dive on this earlier so that I don't have to like continuously do a very special episode of Wheel Takes. Yeah. Like, can we, when we do a very special episode of Wheel Takes, it can it be, be about something new? It should also be actually, you know, very special as opposed to, and now it's been two weeks. <laughs> exactly. Um, so two on arrives. I'm feeling like Matt is about to make a comeback in our lives. Why not two on arriving? Because also the Sean Chan are near slash A and A Budar right now. So they that have, would be they a, have taken the city. Yes. That would be a time to introduce two on in the map plot line, right? That would make sense. And on that note, Tylen dies, hopefully. Hopefully. Let's hope. I brought that forward as well. Good. Um, weird old man from book seven shows up and is in quotes, totally not Jane Farstrider. Okay. The the guy who Like if he shows up and he's like, I'm Shane. Bar bar fryder. Yeah, I'm gonna be like, shut okay, up, bud. shut up. All right, champ, shut up. Okay. If he's like, if he's like, I'm Jane this is the guy with the two swords. best friend's cousin. I'm gonna be like, shut up. This is the guy with the swords from book yeah. seven, who like showed up twice very meaningfully and had a brief POV, and then Robert Jordan decided not to include Abu Dar in book eight. Uh huh. And now we're here, and we're supposed to remember who that guy is. No, in Robert Jordan's mind. He's yeah. like, they're totally going to remember who this guy is. Yeah, you'll, you, they'll pick it up. You know, Shane, uh, Payne. Door, door, door. Close walker. <laughs> you know, it's going to be good. Talonvor, Gaul, and Perrin go after Morghese and Fayil. Because, uh, like, obviously, they're going to go look for them, probably. right? Probably. They're going to look for them. Do we get a resolution on that in this book? So far, no. No, Wait, the, the, oh. the, do we get a resolution? No, because I think this is going to be a slog plot line. I think people are going to hate this. 
This is, okay. All right. Yeah, this is my feeling. My wife. I feel like repeat, the, ta- repeat, the repeat. tower siege is going to be like, a, we got to starve them out for six months first. Sure. Like, and that's how that's going to be boring. And then a lane succession crisis is going to be boring. Why? I don't know, because it's been exciting so far. You've read Game of Thrones. Politics is fascinating. No, oh, politics where you poison people, though. And I feel like that's not these politics. Well, you didn't do it with the like, There's a reason why C-SPAN is not like, Oh, my riveting. CTV. Absolutely riveting. Elida gets deposed and or fucking murdered. I think there's a possibility that the Tower Siege may go into the next book, but I think there is a possibility that Elida's going to get fucking deposed before then. Black like Tower that, uh, that the Black the Tower yeah, will yeah, yeah. go, you know what? She's a liability at this point. Yeah. We got to put our game faces on. All right, all VRNs in charge. How does she die? Or get deposed. How does it happen? This does she get impaled? Thing. Does the cuckoo come out of the hubris clock and go right into her fucking brain? Oh, I hope the hubris clock is involved. I always hope the hubris clock is involved. I love nothing more than the hubris clock. Wasn't there, is, was there a Shakespeare um, where there was a, like a clock? We, we did no, this last time. No, we did this time. and it wasn't true, right? There's I, some play. I swear to Christ. Yes, and somebody pointed it out to us, and I don't remember what it was, because it was two books ago. Oh, you know what? It might have been Romeo and Juliet. The clock struck nine when I did summon the nurse or something like that. I haven't read R&J in a minute. It's been a little while. I think it could have been R&J. Anyway, but I don't know if it was supposed to be ominous, but there is an ominous clock in some place. Remind us again. There's a lot of ominous clocks. Okay. Um... (laughs) Mazram Taim revealed to be a bad guy, in parentheses, obviously. <laughs> Explicitly. Explicitly. Not just, like, really, really heavily implied. And you know what? There's an argument to be made that it's this chapter that that's happened anyway, so... Well, it depends on whether or not he licks his lips, right? Okay, here's my thing. I, what I do appreciate about Robert Jordan is that a cert- there is a certain level of creepiness where... You've crossed the line and now you're fucking evil. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? And I think, you know, and I think that's a good tell from now on, right? If you've crossed the line into cartoonishly evil, you're evil. But also if you like lick your lips at women, like that's where we're going to draw the line. Thumbing your earlobe, fine. But don't be any more obvious than that. Uh, Incidentally, Um, is this a good time to introduce the button? Sure. So we've got the fuck it. uh, Fuck that. Fuck that card. The fuck that card. Now, if a character does something I don't like, and this is not necessarily going to be because Robert Jordan did something I don't like, though that could also be on there if, you know, if it comes up. But if a character does something I don't like, I get to hit the button. And that means I hated that. <laughs> Sound good? Good. Um, Loghain takes over as new head of Rand's Black Tower. Because I think we got to split that baby even sure, more than sure. it's already been split. Because I feel like Mazzy Pizzazz was actually surprised by the Deshiva of it all. He seemed to be. It seemed like he was surprised by that. But that was kind of an out of nowhere moment for him. Because as we have discussed, Osengar, um, like Mazrum Taim's whole thing is I'm going to build the magic nukes. And then Osengar is like, I'm going to launch him. I like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Two different kinds of chaos to introduce to the world, right? And you're still operating on the assumption that Osengar and Deshiva are one and the same. To me, that's a certainty at okay. this point. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Golam attacks in Abudar, oh. I decided. Oh. I don't know why I decided that, though. Because you desperately wanted the Golam to do anything last book. I did. You thought it was going to attack It was a Min, new toy. And that, because it, like, at the top of the book, it, like, sat there on the thing and was like, I'm here now, and I'm out for blood. Yes. And then it... And then it did off not do anything. It, it drank some blood. Literally and left. didn't do anything else. Yeah, it did do that. And so I feel like Chekhov's Golom <laughs> is just there. And now Samael's gone. So someone's going to pick up the Golom mantle. Would make sense. Would make sense for that to be Grendel, I suppose. Could be. I mean, I mean. I don't know Moradin's why. nameless. Oh, right? you know why I decided Golem attacks Nebudar? Because there already was one there, and I figured it's right there. Yeah. But now I'm realizing they also travel really well. 
So they could go anywhere. Oh, but it went back to Abu Dhar. It That's did. why. It went yeah. back to Abu Dhar. So I'm like, okay, so that so it's going to Abu Dhar because it noticed a lot of magic shit happening around Abu Dhar. I think so, yeah. The bowl of the winds thing, I think, right? It was it went to the farm, but then Elaine and the crew went through a gateway to Camelin, and I don't think it could follow them all the way to Camelin. Oh, so then I was like, well then maybe it'll just like Presumably it wandered back south. Yeah, I mean, you would think, okay, and then also they're like Sean Chan show up. So you got to think there's a lot of magic yeah, battles yeah. and shit that it might be attracted to. So I'm, I'm going with it goes back to Abu Dhar. Probably. We're going we're gonna to real quick split the bingo card with a couple of ads. back. Allie, let's let's hear number 11. Mazarin Taim commits war crimes. All right. What? That's pretty similar to Masima commits war crimes. And I was very successful with that. You Would, were. Do you need me to be more specific? No, no, no. I'll take it. I'll well, take I figured because this is in relation to to like Mazarin Taim revealed to be a bad guy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Obviously. And Loghain taking over as new head of the of Rand's Black Tower. I have very little to go on. No, that well, you've got a lot to go on. Like what? Egwene is besieging the White Tower. Perrin is looking for Fael. Matt is still under a wall. Elaine is going to do a bunch of politicking, presumably. And Rand is on the run? Question mark? And, and what plot lines do you propose that I find from them? The Black Tower Hunters. How about the Black Aja Hunters? My favorite subplot in the series. I will be honest, I forgot about them entirely. No! I know. My favorites! Well, I suppose that's fair because they've shown up twice so far. I will be honest, I did not remember. And I asked you, I was like, what plot lines are in existence right now? And you told me what plot lines were in existence. So that is on you? Well, admittedly, it's a fairly minor subplot at this point. I like it. It's great. And we'll get into why this prologue has been slapping so far, as the prologues tend to do. The prologues tend to really slap me in the fucking face. No pun intended, considering that that happens. <laughs> um but, okay, fine. I'll figure out something else instead of Mazram Taim commits war crimes. How no, no, about... No, it's okay. You can keep it. You want to get fun with it and go Danelle revealed to be Masana? If you want to. Instead of Mazram Taim commits war crimes? Or do we keep Mazram Taim re- commits war crimes, get rid of Mazram Taim revealed to be a bad guy? I'd say pick one of those to keep. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So Danelle revealed to be Masana. Why you're, not? You're replacing Mazram Taim confirmed bad with... Danelle confirmed Masana. Mm-hmm. All right. Does that feel fair? Fair to me. Okay. Tenobia arrives to pledge herself to Rand. So you think that's what's happening with the whole Borderlander crew? I'm hoping... That are ominously ominousing their I'm, way south. I'm hoping it's more, like, explosive than that, but yeah. I think it's going to be one of those psych outs. Okay. I'm thinking she rolls up and is like, I have to do something I've been meaning to do a long time ago. Which is shake your hand. And I'm going to be like, boo, stab him. But I'm like, why would she turn on him when Uncle Davy is already in his corner? I feel like she's just come to yell at Davram. Yeah, maybe. Slap that mustache right off his face. Though, at the same time, if she is under um, Samarog's influence, maybe not. That's true. If Samarog is indeed in Saldea. So there's a possibility that the two people I think Samarog might be doing shit with, which are Tuan and... And or Tenobia. What does Samarog look like? Uh, well, I guess you have seen her. Um, she is, I believe... Let's look up a description of Samarog. Unusually tall, slender, with short, wavy hair, dark, large eyes... And black skin. Black skin? Dark skin. She's black. Oh. Well, this changes everything. Why? Well, if she's black, she's going to kind of stand out in Saldia, isn't she? Not necessarily. Not necessarily? There's Mirror of Mists. Yeah, but there's then... Mirror of Mists. Then and you can't get close to anyone. That's kind of a nuisance. It's not a. It's not unheard of for there to be a, a, a darker skinned person in the Borderlands. Oh, really? No. They're a little more coded Asian, but again, it's... Skin color's less of a defining factor. 
right? Like there are sure. some some cultures in the Wheel of Time tend to skew more one way or the other. Sea folk in particular, Aiel in particular, okay. the isolated ones tend to. So it's not super homogenous. It's not one to one. Oh, no. is it not super homogenous and one to one? Interesting. Anyway, um, okay. So then, in that case, I guess you could be in the Borderlands. I was just kind of thinking for a second. I was like, oh, well, if it is homogenous, then that would be kind of a disguise problem. Yeah, it but would be. But if it's not, and she wouldn't stand out that much, then never mind. I mean, yeah, I guess Mirror of Miss exists. And, you know, like in an ideal world, if she as a black woman could go anywhere and not have it be remarked upon. But you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, Okay. But yeah, I'm worried that Tenobi is just going to be like, I came here to yell at my uncle for being too close to the Dragon Reborn, but I, because I want to be close to the Dragon Reborn or some shit like that. Sure. Where it's like, it's my birthright well, it's, to say whether or not we're going to hang out with the Dragon Reborn. I feel like it's going to be some shit like that. She brought all, it's all of the Borderlander rulers are, are together. It's not just Tenobi as yeah, expedition. Yeah, because they're all going to swear fealty to Rand. You think that's, that's all? If Tenobia does it. Yeah. If, if that is all... I hope I I hope that it's more exciting than that, but I I feel like that's where it's going. Well, they just come down, punch him in the dick. Now that would be fun. Just roll up and slap the shit out of him. Then Semarog's definitely hanging out yeah. with Zenobia, that's for sure. But like, why would she do that to her uncle? I don't know. Ms. Ms. That's the thing. Could it's be like, fun. If Semarog is Slap with Tenobia no, 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 and no. is fucking around with Tenobia, then that's what's going to happen. But if not. Then Tenobia is going to do this thing where she's like, makes it seem like she's going to attack Rand and everyone's going to get all worried about it. And then she's going to be like, I came to do something I should have done a long time ago. And then she like takes out her knife and then she like puts it at his feet or some shit like that. They're going to take after I'm her uncle. Like, oh, come on. Just hurl a fucking knife at the man. Honestly, that would be really iconic if she did it all. Diamond time. balls, Davlin Diamond? Bashir. <laughs> Diamond ovaries, Tenobia. Diamond <laughs> ovaries, Tenobia. Doveries. Ugh. Um, okay. But, like, maybe maybe it'll be more exciting than that. Maybe she'll, like, try to punch Rand in the dick. That Good. would be really funny. She might. <laughs> that would be really funny because Javram's like, Javram's like, could you not? <laughs> I've been buddying up with this guy for, like, two books now. But, like, why would she do that? You know what I mean? It seems like it'd be dumb. Could be fun. Could be just some Borderlander Especially bullshit. It seems like the Borderlander's kind of are rocking with Mark because Mark's rocking with us. You're you know going to have I mean? to provide any other definition for that because that is a really, really, really niche TikTok joke. Well, if we're considering that Rand in the books and show is canonically a white dude. Yeah. And there's a, <laughs> there's a TikTok where... I forget what the context of it is. Wait, it's. Uh, I don't know what the context of it is, but it's it's a bunch of uh, it's a bunch of African American guys hanging out in a room, and one of them is like giving a a rally talk, and there's one white dude in the room, and he goes, "You are freaking African Americans plus Mark, and I'm rocking with Mark because Mark's rocking with us." I have yeah. no idea what the context. We're rocking is. with Mark because Mark is rocking with us. So I feel like you know, we've got. A bunch of people of color being like, we're rocking with Mark because Mark is rocking with us. Yes. To be clear, I only said African-Americans because the guy specifically says African-Americans. Well, you are freaking African-Americans yeah. plus Mark. And that's the best. Um, and we're rocking with Mark because Mark is rocking with us. Is how I kind of feel like everyone's been treating Rand, Rand this yeah. entire time. Like Rand is the Mark in every situation he's in. Uh, what is he? I mean, Absolutely, I feel like, Rand is the mark. I feel Rand like was the mark in Two Rivers for sure. Yeah, Rand is sur uh, yes. Rand was the mark to the Aiel. He was for definitely sure. the Aiel, but like every other culture is like, maybe we can. I guess not Ilion. Ilion was like thanks the for the bread. The Borderlanders. The He's Mark. Wait a minute. Rand, Rand is the. I'm going to make a, a Hunger Games reference. And I'm going to be vague. Ooh. Rand is to Ilion. As young Peta is to young Katniss, he gave them bread. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my it God. It goes all the way to the top. All the way to the top. Suzanne Collins. Is she Robert Jordan? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. No. But not even a little. <laughs> but. Yeah. <laughs> but. 
Um, yeah, I, f- I feel like Rand is the mark of every situation sure, sure, yeah, he's I'll, ever been in. I'll buy it. Okay. Nani starts to think about how to solve the taint. Now, this oh. feels a little, a, a starts to think about, Allie. Commit. Commit. Commit one way or the other. Okay. Uh, commits to working on solving the taint. Commits to working. What is that? Commits to solving the taint. How about that? All right. Even that is like, yeah, I'm my, taking action. My playwriting teacher would legitimately throw a book at me for that. That Yes, our playwriting that teacher's was bullshit. least favorite thing is when someone says in a stage direction, she starts to X. She starts to leave the room. How do you start to do that? How do you do start that? to leave the room? Well, okay, it makes sense in my head, though. It does in my yeah, head, too. You start to walk toward the exit. But then you get interrupted. So it's you, like, what it's you're saying you start is, to do, but you get interrupted. What you're saying is, you walk toward the exit, and then you are interrupted. Listen, is that not it what makes you sense said? My, I mean, but it sounds better when you say starts to. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. To me, it does. I like to say starts to. All right, so Nynaeve commits to solving the taint. Mm-hmm. Right. Is that weak T or no? No, no, no. If if you say Ni- well, what is Nynaeve's plot right now? Um. Get laid. Get laid. Which I love for her. Yeah, good for her. Honestly, would we all be that lucky to just have our plot line be? Get the <laughs> get, dick. I get know. railed. Uh, Excellent time. If you're suggesting Nynaeve gets a plot and that plot is figure out how to fix the madness. Well, okay, this is what makes I sense love it. to me. This is what makes sense to me, okay? So Rand loves to delegate. He does. Because he needs to, right? And he's like gotten it into his head that he needs to solve this taint problem. I mean, he kind of... He, he really does. does. <laughs> he, like, really does. It's kind of a big big deal. He, like, really does. And so if I were Mr. Rand... Well, you know what? Rand's a fan of delegating until he's not. Like, he really needs... He, he's a little too much of a fan of delegating in some areas and not enough of a fan of delegating in others. And in this dissertation, I will... <laughs> 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 no, I think I've already done that dissertation. But, um, but he's decided to start solving this... He's decided to begin to think about starting to make an effort towards well, initiating okay, in this book and initi- <laughs> that actually gets a very true. <laughs> Remember in the prologue of book eight when we were like, here come the Borderlanders, and then we didn't see them and, again. And the Golem. And the Golem. And like 45 other things that happened and in Morden that prologue. And Morden played chess with himself. Mm-hmm. I love that ominously, scene. It's- everyone was doing shit ominously, and then not one person did shit dur- who was in the prologue did shit during the course of the book. Varen's stuff panned out. That's true. All right, fine. Varen the goat, or should I say the owl, math win. <laughs> I like that. Um, but okay, so I think it makes the most sense. So clearly to me, the um, male-female original sin shit needs to be solved by a man and a woman. And Nynaeve's already proven herself to be Miss Doctor. Yes. DDS. DDS? Is that a dentist? That is a dentist. MD? MD or DO. We're going MD. So she has her MD, which is her massive dick. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is land. Um, but also she has a doctorate. So she is, <laughs> so she, it feels like she would be the one to solve this problem. No? It would make sense that she would take point on this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It would make sense that it she would be the sense. person who bends her will to this. Yes. It would make sense that, that we put her on that. But she is actively go, involved in this of, somehow. Think, start to think about this. Yes. That would make sense. <laughs> start, start to decide to Start think to make a plan. About possibly. Of considering action. Maybe Towards. Looking up a uh, when is good to set up a planning meeting for the meeting. Okay, but now that I work in a corporation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Meetings, 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 so meetings, 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 meetings. Not meetings. a bad way. I mean, the meetings are productive, but it's like so it's many meetings. meetings. Yeah. yeah, but not a bad way. Van Deen revealed to be Adelius's killer. Now, do I think that will happen this soon? No. It's fast. But... How long are we going to draw that out, you know? Well, how many books are left, including this one? I I know, but I couldn't think of anything else to put. This was, okay, this is my 40 chess of the bingo, okay? Because I'm like, okay, I'm going to put this out here now just in case 
it's one of those That's where he's a great like, point. I introduced a plot line and now I'm going to end it. I, I, I regret introducing this plot line. It's result. One of those. Yeah. yeah he just does in that. case. And then if not, then it gives me like a book or two. Like it gives me another book. Of like downtime, because then if he if he's not introducing and solving it, then it's probably gonna matter and need to be like longer. Sure. So then that eliminates it happening next book, unless I really feel like my spidey senses are tingling. It's gonna get solved next book. I then have like a book of breathing room, and then I could bring it back. So if it doesn't happen in Winter's Heart. It won't happen in Crossroads. I think unless I'm starting to get like a spidey sense. Unless we feeling. get several chapters of. Of a lot of Van, Van Dean Dean. content. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. it's like a lot of Van Dean content at the end of this book, then I might like if I do well this round, move it forward. If I do well, sure. if I can. If not, then I have a book of breathing room before I need to worry about it again. But I have it on my radar to potentially bring back then. Does that make sense? That makes sense. It's going to get hard with the bingo toward the end because then I'm going to be like, I don't no, it's have not. like. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. Why? You were saying I don't, I'm not going to have a lot to predict. No, I am going to have so much to predict. Oh. And not only that, but like if I put it in Towers of Midnight, I can't use it for the next book. That's true. <gasps> oh, that's awful. As I just realized that. That's terrible. Right? Like, Ugh. if I put it in Gathering Storm, I can't use it in Towers of Midnight. But what if, like, it's really close? The gamesmanship. Yes. That's why I'm starting now. I'm starting to try to 4D chess it. Because I'm like, okay, here's my thing, too, is I'm going to start looking back. Because I'm pretty sure that some of the things I've predicted do happen in the series. But don't necessarily happen in the books I predicted them in. So why yeah. not then go back to some of the older... I, I'm Bingo all for it. No, and absolutely. see if there's anything that I neglected. And I think that the Van Dean revealed to be a Delisa's killer thing might be something that is a longer game, but that I might forget about as a plot line when that all the sense. other plot lines start popping up. There are off. a lot of them. There are many plots. These are my thoughts. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was trying to 4D chess it, which I thought was pretty clever. I think it's quite clever. I like it. Gallid Crisis of Faith. Now I've done this it's one before. It's back. He's back. But I feel like now the Elaine succession crisis is becoming a thing. And I'm like, oh, what could be sloggier than Gallad? Am I right? Well, we have not seen him in three and a half books. Right. So I'm starting to think he should make a reappearance. He probably should. And now that his sister is revealed to be alive, enough people have seen her. Yeah. And that she's going to like publicly be like, I'm going to declare for the throne who will march for me. Do you think Gallad's not going to hear about that? I don't think it would make a lot of sense for him to not hear about it. And then, okay. But then again, I also don't think it makes a lot of sense that none of the Aes Sedai or nobility who are with Perrin recognized more gays, which apparently is a bit of a controversial opinion. Is it a controversial opinion? There was a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of back and forth about this. The long and the short of it boiled down to people argued that Taviran made it so that the many Aes Sedai with Perrin, who definitely would have been tracking the Andoran succession would have not recognized her and not noticed the use of her mother's name as her name, and also that it made sense that neither Berylin nor Fail know what she looks like, even though we live in a world with a printing press. Well, yeah, but even when we had a printing press, we weren't, like, printing pictures of royalty, were we? I guess. But they, how good were they? I just think that if you are the queen of the largest nation that is right next to Tar Valen, well, maybe she's aged Who famously studied, <laughs> st studied at the tower and can channel a little tiny bit. And everyone who is a channeler around her can sense how much she can channel and knows exactly how much she can channel. Yeah, but like, I don't know. Out of context. I mean, I just have a really bad face. Like, and if Rand's red hair faces. constantly gets remarked upon... As being, wow, are you Gawain? Because nobody else has that color hair outside of the Aiel waist, except for the Tracans. Right, and then Morghese really rolls up with her bright red ass hair and says, my name is Morghese's mom. I'm from Andor. God, these people are in this family are not good at disguises. They're terrible at disguises. My and by name the way, is she Aiel. <laughs> by the way. I don't care that this is just the the biggest suspension of disbelief because it doesn't really matter. It's just now that we're spending dozens of hours analyzing every other word of this book, then I go, why didn't this happen? But I understand it had to not happen for the plot. I don't really care. I just think it's funny. 
That's fair. But yeah, I feel like Gawain Crisis of Faith is happening. Wait, Gawain or... Oh, Gallad. G- Gallad, okay. Yeah, because you you think, okay, now that my... Like, before when I thought my sister and my mom were dead, I mean, now it's like, well, that's not really a conflict of interest for me anymore, I suppose. I'll, like, be sad about it. But also, she was kind of a dick to me, so whatever. But now that she's alive again... That does create some wrinkles. It does. In that smooth forehead. <laughs> yeah. Am I right? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He will pout quite a bit about it, I think. He just might. With that pretty face. That beautiful boob. He's not a boob. He's one of the biggest boobs on the planet. He joined a cult because they handed him a pamphlet. Uh, sure. I I think that he has a uh, reductive view of morality. A reductive view of morality. A reductive view of morality. You're either right or not. Well, that's dumb as fuck. It is dumb as fuck. But I think he's intelligent. I think he's just, for some reason... No. All right. That beautiful himbo got, right. got accidentally roped into a cult. All right. He's the, he's the celeb recruit, right? Yeah. He's, he's the Tom Cruise. He's the celeb Cruise. recruit. He's a beautiful himbo who got handed a pamphlet and was like, sounds nice. Where do I sign? That's dumb as fuck. And if you have a black and white thinking of morality, that's dumb as fuck. I agree with you. I just think because I think we all know that like morality has shades of gray, and we've just got to figure it our shit out as much as we can. Certainly. And unfortunately, Gallad's a bit of a fuck, and that's okay. He's pretty. He doesn't have to be smart. I'm just kidding. Is that John Hamm's character in Thirty Rock? I'm just kidding. I know. I know you're kidding. Um. Honestly, yes. Yeah. He is John Hamm's character in 30 Rock. And yeah. I actually, this is the second time someone has been compared to John Hamm's character in 30 Rock in my presence recently. Really? Yes. Because for context, someone was talking to me about someone who's like pretty successful and attractive. And they were like, but they're pretty sure that they don't actually do any work at their job, yeah. even though they have an important job. Like, that there is, there's a real head scratcher around what that person do, actually does from day to day. Sure. Um, and they were like, you know, I feel like they're like John Hamm's character on 30 Rock, where it's like, what do they actually do? Like, how have they actually earned this position? And what do they actually do from day to day? But maybe it's just that they're like attractive enough that they just kind of like got this position and now they don't know what to do with it because they can, didn't have to work for it. Can you give the people a brief rundown on John Hamm's character on 30 Rock? John Hamm's character on 30 Rock, I believe, is a lawyer. I think so. For the um, network. For NBC. For NBC. Yeah. Right, but it's not NBC. It's like, it's NBC, but it's not NBC. It right? is, they call it, it something else. No, because they aired, it is an NBC show. But they call the... They call it NBC. They call the network NBC. Okay, so... I think. Because 30 Rock is 30 Rockefeller Place. Pl- uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Place, I think. Probably. I trust you. But it's definitely 30 Rockefeller. You lived in New York. I didn't. I'm pretty sure it's Rockefeller Place. I but trust you. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, I don't feel like looking it up. Um, but that is where NBC is. Now I got to look it up because I'll feel like an idiot if I'm wrong. 30 Rockefeller. Okay. Cut. Okay. 30 Rock stands for 30 Rockefeller Plaza. You were wrong. You made me cut it. You wanted me to cut it. I but you were wrong. This never happens. Fuck off. <laughs> I love you. I love um, you too. And so, um, yes. And inside is... Hold on. Now they all know what our cut sound sounds like. <laughs> yeah, they do. Um, it is a... Um, and it's where NBC is. Um... And the series is based on Tina Fey's experiences as head writer for Saturday Night Live. Oh, that makes sense. Um, and that's why it's named after 30 Rockefeller Plaza. So anyway, that's where yeah. NBC studio, so studio John, is located. So John Hamm's character. So John Hamm's character is a lawyer for the studio. Yeah. And he is so unqualified to be doing that. Like, and the thesis of the character is you are so attractive that you have just gotten to skate your way through life and have gotten this unbelievable re- amount of responsibility, but and you're hot, so you keep getting away at being utterly incompetent at your job. Yeah. And it's great. Yeah. It's a hilarious it's great character. character. Um, People just hand him stuff on the street. And then later, I believe that the character gets a guest spot on Parks and Recreation. I believe John oh. Hamm's... It's a, it's a crossover, I think. No, because... 
Because John Hamm also plays a character on... He plays a character in one episode of Parks and Rec. Who's super, super incompetent. Yes, but it's not the same character. It's not. It can't be because... And I'm not going to spoil too much about 30 Rock. John Hamm's character on 30 Rock has a readily identifiable feature by the end of his time on 30 Rock. Uh, that is not that is not duplicated in his very brief cameo on Parks and Rec. I just really love that John Hamm went from Mad Men to like I'm gonna do a bunch of random comedy shit where I play like a dumbass. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's really great. You know, I really like know, this career trajectory for him. You know, this something that I appreciate and remember and think of sometimes is that John Hamm did not work as an actor in Hollywood until he was in his 30s. He was represented by William Morris in his really? in his 20s. Did he get dropped? Yes. Yeah. He, there are two agencies in Hollywood that are fucking massive. William Morris and uh, uh, what's the Creative other one? Creative Artist Agency. Yeah, CAA. And he was repped by one of them in his mid-20s and got no work. And then he got dropped. And then he got dropped. Yeah, as you will. And then he got some stuff in his 30s because he just simply had not grown into his type. That happens a lot. Yeah. That happens a lot. Anyway. Um, I got dropped by my first reps. Yep. It happens. It's devastating at the time. And then you realize that sometimes you just grow into new reps and it's fine. And everything ends up fine. Uh, Oh, I scrolled down by accident. Tell you what, while you're scrolling back up, we're going to take a quick ad break. Go ahead. Okay. Gawain starts to think about fighting the Shido. And by that, starts I mean... Starts to I've, think about... No, I was just fucking with you. All right. Gawain fights the Shido. To get... Uh, what's her nuts back? Who? Morgays? G- Galena? Galena? Yeah, I think so. He went after them. But Morgays is now with the Shido. So do you think Gawain's going to well, end up teaming up with... That might be a with... different group of Shido. Because they're all split up. Didn't those Shido explicitly state Savannah wants more guy shine? Yeah, but is Galena with the group that is with Masana? Savannah. Oh, fuck. There's so many of them. Okay. Galena is with Tharava, who is with Savannah. So, yes, Galena is in the same group. Oh. Okay, so here's what's happening. Gawain's going for Galena, and he's going to accidentally find his mom. Mm. Fucking funny. And then he's going to be like, oh, I guess I've been a dick for no reason. Unless more gays fucking die. You think? Whoa. But is she going to die like in front of him? You think? So that Gawain can stop being a fuckhead? Or is Gawain just going to be a fuckhead until the end of time? Because like I like Gally because he's kind of a himbo and he's just confused and we'll like set him straight. We'll just like sick barrel lane on him probably because they're both really hot and I just want that for them because then either their babies will be like really cute or really fucked up looking. (laughs) You always say this. It's true. I, I know, I know, I know. The hottest people either make really hot kids or really weird looking kids. It's so, just one of the two. So my question is, does Gawain single-handedly attack the Shido, or does he join up with Perrin and the crew and go through a Does like, Gawain a whole single-handedly thing? join the Shido or what? Does he single-handedly try to solo the Shido to save Galena? Was well, he by himself? I thought he was with He's his little younglings. He's got a few younglings, younglings yeah. I guess, does his little crew try to solo them or does he join up with Perrin? Oh, okay. So then we have fucking Masima, Aram, Gawain, Perrin, and Gaul. And Talonvor. That's so a lot of toxic masculinity in one we group. We drop a fucking meteor on that group. Perrin can escape. The rest of them die. No, not Gaul. Oh, Gaul. Gaul. God. Gaul's. Fu- yeah. Let Ga- Perrin die, not Gaul. Gaul will jump over the shockwave. Good. Okay. So, pa- no. And then Perrin and Gaul kiss. Yeah. Problem solved. Yeah, no, that's 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 canon now. Yeah, because that's a lot of toxic masculinity in one group, and like Perrin is toxic, but in Elias a, like, I can, can go too. But yeah, after after his like casual like racism five, from last book, five yeah, chapters in a row of women. Am I right? But not only that, not only that, not only that, Saldian women. Am I right? And then he literally almost called Fayil a Saldian pepper, which we've established <laughs> is a microaggression <laughs> to Saldians. So 
He can go with that casual racism and misogyny. Thank you. You were cool until you opened your mouth. And that happens so often. Mm. Why do these people get ruined by talking? Sometimes the coolest thing you can do is not say anything. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Honestly, the coolest people are the quietest. Am I right? Anyway, so that's a win for the introverts. Um, yes. Um, and on the note of people we should drop a train on, Barrelane is squicky toward Perrin. Oh, boy. Now, you know what? I feel like I've lost as a person my I can fix him. You know, I've yeah. like I've left that behind, but I haven't let go of I can fix her because I, I think it. I haven't dated enough toxic women. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, I propose that as a possibility. Look, we've said many times that Barrelane's problems aren't Barrelane's problems. They're Robert Jordan's problems. Well, because I feel like if a man is mean to me, that's a feminism issue. But if a woman is mean to me, I'm like, yes, queen, be a girl boss. <laughs> you support women's wrongs. <laughs> support women's wrongs. Uh, do you know what i mean though i know what you mean like i'm somehow weirdly more okay with it because <laughs> i'm like she had to deal with a lot to get here you know what i mean to be mean to me <laughs> i know i'm what not you saying mean, it's right and i know that you don't really mean it i'm not saying it's right i'm just saying <sighs> all of this for legal reasons is a joke yes i know okay yes just like with the fucked up looking children i don't actually think any children no are of course up. of course of course and Gawain being a himbo. No, Galad. Galad is a himbo. Let's be honest. Galad's a bit of a himbo. He's a himbo who loves to, like, swoosh his little sword around. It's cute. Okay. Aram joins Masima's cult. That's happening. That would make sense. Uh, Davram Bashir dies. Whoa. Here's my thought. My boy? I think so. Oh, God. I think he's fucked. Why? I think most of the parents in this are fucked. Oh, no. The parents, but what about the parents? Perrin, I think, lives to the end, like close to the end. All right. Like if if the two reverse kids are going to die, it's going to be toward the end. Sure. And I think the only two reverse kids I could see dying are Perrin and Egwene. Yes, you've said that before. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I think Davram and maybe Dira are fucked. Definitely Davram. He's too awesome. He's pretty cool. He's fucked. He's pretty cool. One day, these diamond bo- he's going to diamond balls too close to the sun. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You know? Um, but it will be cool. Yeah, and Aram's just going to join Masima's cult. Like, he was already, like, licking his lips at him in his general direction. He and is the worst. He is the worst. And you know what, though? Perrin's partially to blame for that. Anyway, so... Perrin is entirely to blame for that. Yeah, Perrin is in large part to blame for that. Listen... In a few books, you get to hear my whole rant about this, mm-hmm. but not today. This is all parents' fault. Um, Avienda or Brigitte stop an Elaine assassination attempt. Ah, okay. Because if we're Dias de Maring. That is literally all they're doing right now. What? Dias hanging de out, Hanging out with Elaine. Yeah, so I'm like, one of them has got to stop yeah, it. Because we've taken half the interesting characters in the book and given them the plot line of, just go keep an eye on Elaine. And Millie Skane was like, hey, weird oh, guy. Oh, How would God. you like to something a queen? I don't remember what it was, but it was vaguely creepy. It was extremely creepy. It was very creepy. It and was then, it was something like, How would you like lay to- hands on? Yeah, I hated hold that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That sounds like wait, either, that sounds like. Wait, it, wait, yeah. we mentioned David Hanlon. <laughs> All right. We hate him. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, um, me thinks that that's going to be a thing. Millie Skane attacks Matt. Makes sense. I mean, Wasn't right? she in Andor last we saw her? I thought she was in Abu Dhar. She's also got to Andor. How'd she get there so fast? Very carefully. Speedy Millie over here. My God. I think Moradin bopped her over there. Oh. well, that And be- also Jacob no, Carradine. because Jacob Carradine was in Abu Dhar also. Oh. No, he, he for some reason... Jacob Carradin and Millie Skane and Phalian Boda were all in uh, Andor. Even though they were in Abu Dhar before. Yeah, and then he just like threw him over to Camelin real like quick envy. to be like, hey, oh. David Hanlon. Hold on. Hey, David Hanlon. 
Okay. Let's uh, let's drown some people with brandy. Well, then she can't attack Matt, so that doesn't make sense. But what if she just gets back? No. She could do. That doesn't make sense. Could do. Well, I wanted something for Millie Skane to do, but I only think what's his name is going to do what she wants him to do. So what's she doing in Andor then? She could go back. Vibing. What if what if Morin well, just I pops open a gateway for her? going to attack Matt. That would make sense. Okay, you, I mean, didn't the golem you've already, already got, attack you've already Matt? Got, is that a repeat? You've already thing? got golem attacks in Abudar. Mm-hmm. I, you can't do golem attacks in Abudar and golem attacks Matt. That's the same thing. Yeah. At this point, yeah, That's Matt's what I in Abudar. Said, so get a golem attacks in Abudar. No, I'm, I'm saying if you because I think to, it's possible he could the golem could attack someone else in Abudar. I mean, Tom's there. Sure. Joylin's there. What I'm saying is you, you that you you can't. Double. You can't do both of those. I didn't do both of those. Oh, I thought you were going to. Okay, no, 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 no. I because now I'm also like, well, would Millie Skane and the Golem attack Matt? That seems like overkill. It's Matt. Matt or his associates. Yeah. Um, Millie Skane attacks Brigitta. All right. Why not? Right. Like she. Oh, that would be kind of cool, right? Like she's a famous assassin. She's a famous hero of the Horn. I'd pay to see them fight. That'd be good. Let's do it. Millie scanned attacks Brigitte. Because, okay, wait. So Brigitte stops the assassination attempt against Egwene, Elaine, as she's supposed to, right? And then fucking Millie Skane's like, gotta dispatch Brigitte for sure. That would make sense. And then there's a fight. I'd be compelled. I'd be super compelled. But now I feel like, now I'm starting to doubt myself. Don't. Because I, Never don't, doubt have, I don't have anything about the tower siege. I guess I have a light against well, a post. You know, everybody makes mistakes. Oh, stop. <laughs> Tom gives Matt lessons on Maybe court. we just don't talk about the tower siege. Maybe we just don't go oh there. Oh my this god. Place. That's what's happening, isn't it? That's what's gonna happen. You really I'm fucking with you. You really think we're yeah, just gonna I do skip now. that? You think we're just gonna not talk I, about yeah, that? Yeah, I do. No Egwene this we book. We absolutely are gonna do that. There's no Egwene this book. I believe that in my heart now. Really? Yeah, absolutely I do. Why? Because it's she just ro- teleported to the White Tower. A, a wall fell on Matt. A wall fell on Matt. That's true. We had the Battle of the Two Rivers, the most exciting thing that's ever happened to Perrin before or since. Also, one of the best <laughs> plots in the entire series. Absolutely, a hundred percent. It was unbelievable. It was so good. I was like, I can't wait to hear more about these two. Fucking gone from the next book. Well, they this were is classic. Well, you know Robert. why we didn't see them? What? They were plowing each other the entire of book five. All right. You know why we're not going to see Egwene? She's too busy going to town on herself about the fact that she's going <laughs> to attack the White Tower. <laughs> oh, man. All right. That's what's going to happen. So you know what? Good thing I didn't spend too much time on that. I guess. Okay. Well, Tom gives Matt lessons we'll on- We'll see. Tom gives Matt lessons on court politics. Now, hear me out. Tom has been needing a plot line for about 10 years now. Tom hasn't really done anything since... Oh, God, I don't even know. I know. He hasn't done anything since the Stone of Tear. When was the Stone of Tear? Book three and four. Yeah, okay, so he's just been on ice for so long. Don't you think he's going to turn to Matt and, ugh, this is the worst, but he's going to be like, all right, listen, I see what's going on here with Tylen. Right. I understand you're in a bad position. As someone who has also been in a sexual relationship with a queen, you do have to, like, get wise a little bit. Ugh. Am I wrong? Ugh. I'm not saying any, like, you know. No, I know. I just hate Tylen. I just feel like he's going to be like, let me at least make it so that you don't accidentally get yourself killed in Abudar. Yeah, let well, me, yeah, yeah. Since you were once my a guy I taught to juggle, let me teach you how to juggle this sexual relationship? Yeah, the whole thing. I don't know how to phrase it. There's no good way to Whatever phrase Whatever the fuck is going Tyler. on here with this fuckery. Yeah. Okay, Elias teaches Perrin more about his wolf powers. God, I fucking hope so. And I hope the first thing is, hey, stop trying to push them away. Can Elias be useful at all other than his casual racism and misogyny? I would really appreciate that. Then I might spare him in the great I'm dropping a train on this group of 2023. <laughs> <sighs> if one of these guys is useful they get to live once what if it's Talonvor what if Talonvor oh, I had like... my fingers crossed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, settle Anon revealed to be that Aes Sedai who burned herself out forever ago alright I feel like yeah right yeah I mean she probably is 
Why are you behaving this way? I don't know. Do you not like my prediction? I love your prediction. I feel like it's this book. I think it's great. David Hamlin. Ugh. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Inserts himself into Elaine's life and it's bad. Uh, apparently I have nothing, and nothing for Beslin. So, Oop, that's be- it. Beslin? Oh, fuck that guy. Who cares? Mr. I want you to fuck my mom. Uh-huh. All right. Here we go. Winter's Heart. The Epigraph. Okay. The seals that hold back night shall weaken. Ah, fuck. And in the heart of winter shall winter's heart be born amid the wailing of lamentations. That's a full sentence. You don't, don't do that with your... mm. And in the heart of winter shall winter's heart be born amid the wailing of lamentations and the gnashing of teeth. For winter's heart shall ride a black horse. And the name of it is death. Oh, is that, is that more in him? Rand's gonna ride Morden. Is that what's gonna happen? Kinky. Hell yes. Um, here's my thing. What if they like body switch though? You have mentioned that before. Wouldn't that be funny? It would be funny. Like, wow. Cause like if a part of him is still in Morden's head, that's like a total loophole. It is. That is such a loophole. Yeah. Well, I mean, the way you described it was again, it was like if two threads burned back and then started interweaving, mm-hmm. right? That's a fuck me in the ass because I love Jesus level loophole. Huh? Garfunkel and Oates song? <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great song. Everyone knows what I'm talking Oates. about. No, they don't. That is an American sketch comedy duo that wrote that song 10 years ago. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the idea that if, if, if they do it in the butt, it's not losing your virginity. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck me in the ass because I love Jesus. It's just like soaking? Yes. The Mormon thing? It's just thing. like soaking. Don't look it up. Loophole. Right. Look at how small the map is for some reason. <laughs> Why is the map so small, this book? It's like they shrunk it what if, 20%. What if it's because um, eventually next book, it'll be like, funk, and here's more of the world. Oh, we're going to expand uh, the shit. Uh, that's my thing about Malazan. I just finished the eighth Malazan book. He just pulls maps out of his ass to put in the front of the book. Sure. They're usually kind of relevant. You They're sometimes what? not. Why not pull maps out of your ass? Where else are you going to get them? Because you love Jesus. <laughs> I have um, to link that song in the description you now. You absolutely do. Oh, boy. Is that too inappropriate? Should we cut that? Matt's horse is named Cum Guzzler. You're right. All right. Anyway... All right, the prologue. All right, go ahead. Three lanterns cast a flickering light, more than enough to. No, I'm not doing this. All right, the prologue. So stressful reading. Snow. Three lanterns cast a flickering light, more than enough to to illuminate the small room with its stark white walls and ceiling. But Shayna kept her eyes fixed on the heavy wooden door. Illogical, she knew. Foolish in a sitter for the white. The weave of sidar she had pushed around the jam brought her occasional whispers of distant footsteps in the warren of hallways outside, whispers that faded away almost as soon as heard. A simple thing learned from a friend in her long-ago novice days, but she would have warning long before anyone came near. Few ke- few, few people came down as deep as the second basement anyway. All right, so what's going on? All right, so there torturing what's her name yeah we've picked up literally five ten twenty minutes after the last time we saw them yeah they were like we've been friends for 50 years but i'm gonna torture you right now yeah and i'm like you know what i don't advocate for torture but i respect that you know (laughs) brown fringe shawl looped on her elbows sharon stood with her feet planted apart fingering the hilt of the curved altaran dagger thrust behind her belt Cold anger darkened her olive complexion enough to make the scar along her jaw stand out in a pale line. Pivara appeared calmer at first glance, yet one hand gripped her red-embroidered skirts tightly, and the other held the smooth white cylinder of the oath rod like a foot-long club she was ready to use. You know what my favorite thing about Pivara is? What? Every time that we see Pivara, they've got to bring up the fact that Dark Friends killed her whole family. I love Pivara. Yeah, that's her but, That's her villain, not villain origin story. Pavara is fun. I, I like, like her. Yeah. I like everyone who's part of this plot line so Why far. do we like this plot line, Allie? We've because, talked about this. Because, <laughs> because there is a clear goal 
Yep. That they are making active steps toward. Yep. And? It's fun. And? And? The stakes are readily apparent. The stakes are readily apparent, and they're high. Yep. Um, There is hope that they can accomplish it, but fear that they won't. Yep. Um, And women. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a fucking great plot line. And not then having to, like, strip naked for it. Where mm-hmm. you can play a fuck that card about that when we get there if you want to, because I think we've talked about nudity for nudity's sake more than a few times. Yeah. But uh yeah, yeah we'll see. Uh yeah, I love this plot. I love it. I love it so much. This is this is my favorite minor plot in the books. I should clarify really quickly. Do what you want about the the Butt stuff and you Jesus. going back to fuck me in the ass because yes, I love I'm, Jesus? I don't want to offend anyone. Do what you want with your own butts and your own Jesus. It's a funny song. You're it's referencing just a, a funny, funny song. song. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to be clear. But because it is a loophole. That is yeah, well yeah, known. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, Yukiri's there. We love her. I respect religious people. Anyway, continuing. Dacine <laughs> is there. We love her. And Talene is having a terrible time. Where's Talene? Where's Tali? Oh, she's in that chair thing. She's in the chair of remorse, Allie. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. I think it's funny. I just, the chair of remorse. Just very aptly named. Like, it feels like Povara named the chair. You know what I mean? Sweat drenched Talene, matting her golden hair, soaking her linen shift till it clung to her. Can can I can I also just say really quickly that sweat soaks so many people in this it does in this prologue constantly that everyone's just unbelievably dehydrated in this entire prologue. The rest of her clothes made a jumbled pile in the corner. Her closed eyelids oh. fluttered, and she let out a constant stream of strangled moans and mewling half-uttered pleas. Okay, so she's naked. Well, no, she's in her shift. They make a point of sex. Yes. She's in her shift, and she's, like, moaning and mewling and naked, and her head's rolling around. Yep. And she's soaked in sweat. Yep. Anyway. But she's having a terrible time. She's having a terrible time, uh, because... In her brain, the chair is making her see things, right? It's making her, like, relive all the bad things she's done to other people, but done to her. Oh. Basically. Is, is really? Shayna felt ill, but could not drag her eyes away. Talene was a friend. Had been a friend. Yeah. Fucking right. So the, the Terangrial is a large rectangular block of marbled gray. Marbled gray what? The chair of remorse. Okay, so wait. The chair of remorse is just what I experience, like, right before I go to sleep every night. <laughs> or I just think about all the embarrassing shit I've ever done. So she sits on criminals caught in Tarv Allen. So were we'll bro- call mine, like, the squishmallow of remorse. <laughs> <laughs> criminals caught in Tarv Allen were brought down here to experience the chair of remorse. To experience carefully selected consequences of their crimes. On release, they invariably fled the island. And Shana goes, "What? what is she seeing and Dicene goes she's bloody being flogged by bloody trollocs when they're done she can see the trollocs cook kettle boiling over a fire and a meardrill watching her and she must know it will be one or the other next why did we have to bring up the why? fucking mirror hold on hold on fuck that all right fuck that burn me if she doesn't break this time so they've been trying to uh break her will right right is it specifically stuff that she's done? I think it's it's they they call it carefully selected consequences of their crimes. Okay. So in my interpretation, they are drawing on what they have done to other people. No. Oh, wow. Because right? they say consequences of their crimes. She's an evil bee. Oh yeah, she's a dark friend. That sucks. Yeah. I just can't imagine doing evil shit. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's like... Like, I I say stuff, but I could never actually hurt a person. The tricky thing about doing evil shit, and I I agree with you in concept, the tricky thing about doing evil shit is the good place problem. Oh, that, like... There is no ethical consumption under capitalism and all that. Yeah. Well, you tell Gallad that. I know. Because he's (laughs) Mr. Like, oh, everything's good or bad. Let me read this pamphlet and take it at face value. What a fucking chucklehead. But when we get into like, (laughs) I'm just going to feed people to monsters. 
and have ca- have have cactus parties you in know the why, sky. You That's know a why, different thing. You know entirely. why Gallad thinks that the world is black and white because he's got pretty privilege. It so does. everyone's nice to it's him true. all the time. It's pretty privilege. So they're like, hey, maybe she's chill after all. And and Pavara is like, you dense motherfuckers. No, she's not chill after all. Fuck you. Dark friends killed my family. God damn it. Pavara's giving me Batman. I am. <laughs> I am the knight. I, am the knight. <laughs> I love Pavara. When I shielded her, she tried to stab me. I kind of insist that you do the Batman voice every time Pavara talks. No, I can't. <laughs> kind of insist. Are you blind and deaf? Pavara snapped. She refused to re-swear the oath against speaking an untrue word, and it had to be more than stupid green Aja pride after we'd all done as much already. When I shielded her, she tried to stab me. Yeah, Does that shout of, innocence? Does it? That's kind of the most damning evidence that there is. Yeah. So, you know, they, they, they keep on torturing her, and uh, Desine is like, all right, we're pulling her towards the cook pot now. And, like, I really don't want to make her relive getting eaten or imagine getting eaten. That would be bad. That would be bad. Wait, so she is seeing what she's seeing as well. She is experiencing this. No, no, no. Oh, Dasin. Dasin is... So you put someone in the chair of remorse and then you channel into it. And to my understanding, you can make people live things out. And it's basically what they use it for, to my understanding is this is what you did to someone else. Yeah. So it's not necessarily but drawing on... But she's gotta, on, like, see it. Docene does, because she's making it yeah, happen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Well, that's kind of traumatic for her, am I right? Yeah, it's fucked up. So Sharon is like, all right, wake her up. And again, Sharon, Shayna... Rosa Sharon's yeah. like, wake her up. So they wake her up. And Pavara hurls the oath rod at her and goes, Forswear all oaths that bind you and retake the three oaths, Talene. And Talene is like, what if I don't? Well, then you're going in the pot. Next time, Talene, it's the cook pot for you. Oh, and then, then or the mirror draws tender attention. Ah! Oh! All right. Cooker. So... <laughs> She doesn't want to do the thing, and then she does, and she forswears the oaths, and then she re-swears the oaths, and Sharon goes, are you of the Black Aja? What does she say? Duh. Yeah. Obviously. Hell yes. Get that bag. All right. I am. And it, I love this, because uh-huh. all of them are like, oh. Oh, boy. Oh, fuck. We didn't think you actually were, though. We we just tortured you for two hours. It was a prank, bro. It was a prank. Look at the camera. It wasn't that serious. (laughs) The simple words froze Shayna in a way she'd never expected. She had set out to hunt the Black Aja, after all, and believed in her quarry as many sisters did not. She had laid hands on another sister, on a sitter had helped bundle to lean along deserted basement hallways wrapped in flows of air, had broken a dozen tower laws, committed serious crimes, all to hear an answer she'd been nearly certain of before the question was asked. But I'm the good guy. Now she right? she is. Mm. Now she had heard. But it's getting blurry. The Black Aja really did exist. She was staring at a black sister. Meanwhile, Pavara's like, I fucking told all you biddies the whole time I've been here that a, there's fucking black Aja. A dark friend who wore the shawl and believing turned out to be a pale shadow of confronting. Only her jaw, clenched near to cramping, kept her teeth from chattering. She struggled to compose herself, to think rationally, but nightmares were awake and walking the tower. See, I think it's kind of cute. That they're so shocked by this. It is fun. Because I would operate under the assumption yeah. that some people in this tower were fucked up. I mean, what are the odds? I know. The odds yeah. that you have like a tower full of the most powerful women and in none of them the suck? world. And not one person tries right. to make them suck. Uh, we're gonna take not a, one of them sucks. We're going to take a quick ad break. back so we've just uh when you well we all know that if someone gets like a modicum of power usually they end up sucking yeah we've, we've especially people who feel like entitled to it we've just gotten to confession 
I just find it kind of adorable that they're like, what? You're telling me. They're not like, no, it's not the same thing, it's right? It's kind of cute, though, isn't it? Because I feel like cute. I'm on Favara's side where I would walk into that tower and be like, all right, which one of you are some evil biddies? It is cute, but they're not going like, wait, you're actually Black Aja? They're going like, oh, it's one thing to like, this is definitely happening. It's another thing to be told, yes, it is. Oh, I know. I'm just saying it's like kind of cute because I feel like I'd be like, yeah, it's probably that's it's probably a thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Sharon, Sharon is like, all right, let's fucking go. Thumb screws, motherfucker. Let's roll. Well, because I'm trying to think like what would be a group where someone would be like, oh, there are evil people involved in that. And I'd be like, what? Because usually I don't know. Like, even if, if somebody came up to me and was like, there's some evil people in the ASPCA, I'd be like, yeah, probably. <laughs> You know, I don't know. <laughs> What's the ASPCA, Allie? That's a dog shelter organization. Yeah. I just, I feel like, event, I feel like probably. American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals? Yeah, I feel like. I think. I don't know. I worked in nonprofits. Yeah. There's some fucked up people there. <laughs> Pivara frowned. Before we give her to Elida, Sharon, I want to dig out as much as we can. Names, places, anything. Everything she knows. Dark friends had killed Pivara's entire family. And Shayna was sure she would go into exile, ready to hunt down every last black sister personally. And Talene kind of laugh cries and goes, When you do that, we're all dead. Dead! Elida's black, Aja! Oh, stop. No, she's not. She's too dumb. Everyone is like, no. She's, no. 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 And Desine is like, well, she swore the oaths, therefore this is... This is true. No, it's true to her, because she's probably not the brightest bulb as we're starting to suss out. Use your heads, Pavara growled. You know as well as I do, if you believe a lie, you can say it for truth. Thank you, Pavara. That's what I was saying, too. Okay, see, Pavara and I are the same. (laughs) I stan her. I love Pavara. Pavara, are Pavara and I like the same? A little bit. Yeah? A little bit. You feel that? A little bit. You feel a little bit? A little bit. I feel a little bit. I feel like, you know, the the pessimistic sides of us are the same. So occasionally people online will very kindly and very sweetly, knowing that we work in the arts, go like, who could Allie and Gus play? Which is very sweet of you all. Thank and, you. know, you. very kind. Um, Vivara has been mentioned for you before. Really? Yes. I'm so honored. Yes. Wow. Okay. I'm so honored. Now, if she does anything fucky, I'll be like, hey. <laughs> uh, so no, you know me. I love playing a bad person. That's Sh- my <laughs> That's true. Sharon- that's my favorite thing on the planet. Sharon is like, prove it. Prove it. Prove that Elijah's is black Aja. Fuck around and find prove out. That Elias- Give it to me. Oh, because she and she goes, can I can I summarize? Yeah. She goes, oh, well, the Black Aja know everything she's doing, like, whenever she's doing it. Yeah. And then I go, okay, but I know Elida, and she's a fucking idiot. She There's is. no way that, and she was propped up as definitely a puppet for whoever wants to be running the show. Yeah. Right, because she's a fucking dumbass. Who might we, and, and she, like, recently, very recently, made all these declarations and then reneged them the next day when Alviarin came back. Yeah, a little, little transparent there, bud. Let's go with Alviarin as our potential option, Let's think we? about this for 30 seconds or less. Yeah, oh, you know, you know who else knows everything Elida's doing and would, could probably pass it to the Black Aja if she were the Black Aja? The Keeper. The fucking Keeper. It's the Keeper. It's the Keeper. It's the keeper. God, I was so proud of myself. I will never forget when I found out that she was Black Aja because I knew it. I fucking knew it. So they talk about uh, when to go to Elida. They should wait. Uh, sh- uh, Pavara gets Shayna to share the news about the 10 spies and that they have a network uh-huh. that they can use to root out the Black Aja. Yeah. Which is fucking awesome. Fucking and I great. love this plot. I love this plot. More, more. You know, I feel like Sailor and Waldorf. I'm like, more, 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 more. more. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's, that. and then Shayna vomits because Girl. women can't have emotions without vomiting. Perrin, admittedly, Perrin vomited at Demise Wells. Yeah, but there was like ground up people in front of him. I know. People had been made into hamburgers. Yes, I agree. 
I'm just, you know, anyway, she vomits if because she, if you she's don't so vom- stressed throw out about up when people get out. turned into hamburgers, then you're not a real Something's person. Something's going on. So we switch perspective to Elaine. How's she? We switch perspective to Elaine. Uh, so Elaine is bad. Yeah, she's doing bad. Weather sucks. She's chilling in the in the in the palace. She's and the waiting. bull's sitting there like, you asked for hot. No, cold. you asked for cold. It is February. So this is correct. Yeah. Uh, she's waiting on nine even Van Dean. She'd wish they'd show up. Meanwhile, the Aiel are there like, what the fuck? Nynaeve was up to her neck planning with Rihanna and the rest of the knitting circle how to spirit kinswomen out of Sean Chan controlled lands before they were discovered and collared, which mm. is great. That's a great so thing So Nynaeve has the plot line. So, hey. Supposedly, Van Dean was still shaken by her sister's and murder. While she's doing that, can she start to think about potentially, possibly. One day, planning a meeting for curing the taint? Yeah. Supposedly, Van Dean was still shaken by her sister's murder, barely eating and barely able to give advice of any sort. Ah, uh, relatable. The barely eating part was true, but finding the killer consumed her. Mm, I think she knows who the killer is. Supposedly walking the halls in grief at odd hours, she was secretly hunting the dark friend well, among yeah. them. If I slit my sister's throat, I'd be walking around at weird hours, too. Three days earlier, just the thought of that could make Elaine shiver. Now it was one danger among many. Yeah, that's that. We're gonna table that. <laughs> we're gonna table that for sure. So she's who? Who's she talking to? Um, who am I, who is who talking to? Elaine. Who's Elaine? she talking to? She's talking to Dylan. What are they talking about? Whether or not they should have mercenaries and hunters for the horn in Elaine's army. Yeah, in her palace guard. Yeah. Thing and Dylan. Okay, so here's the thing. The argument is that, first of all, mercenaries cost a fuckload of money and yep. they're going to cut and run the second shit gets hairy because you're just paying them. They don't feel any loyalty towards you. Sure. That's that's one argument. And the heroes of the horn thing, well, they're just a bunch of fucking idiots who are going to hunt for the horn. And the minute that they hear that the horn is anywhere nearby, they're going to leave. Yeah. But Elaine's like, okay, but it's going to take a fucking bazillion years to get a, a substantial army around me. And... Meanwhile, all of the other houses have been like kind of stockpiling their people. Yeah. And um <clears throat> also, not only that, but um it looks like it's going to be a civil war. Well, yeah, probably. Cuz we got to just kind of like skip to the good part. And I'm like, "Thank you. War." <laughs> uh and um and uh, Dylan's like, I had hoped to avoid civil war. And I'm like, it's the apocalypse. It is a book. I, I have to tell you, it is a book and it is the apocalypse. We're not going to avoid it. Sorry. Most interesting thing wins. So, um, yeah. So then Elaine decides I'm going to go with, even though Dylan and Brigitte are against it. She's like, I'm doing it. I'm putting my like gorgeous little foot down. And um, Brigitte is not happy about it. Um, and Elaine can tell because she can feel her feelings, which sounds like a nightmare because I have enough feelings. I don't need another person's feelings in my body, too. And then also Dylan. Oh, and Robert Jordan, of course, could not resist telling us that Brigitte and Elaine's periods have sunk up. Yeah. Sunk up. Yeah. Synced up. They've synced. So sunk up. By the way, real quick, what's Brigitte's job now? Captain of the Guard. Captain General of the Queen's Guard. Good cool. for her. Yeah. Also. I love that for her. Their period synced up. All right. Listen, 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 listen. That does happen. It has and happened. And I'm not saying, I think we should normalize talking about periods. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, that's not right. I just yeah. feel like Robert Jordan couldn't resist doing it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, there's a, there's a, like, a, <laughs> I'm just like, of course you did. Mm-hmm. Of, of course. Of course. Of course. I just, I don't know. But I'm also like, you know, you know what? Who am I to shake my finger at a man trying to normalize talking about periods? You go, Robert. You know, it's a complicated emotion that like swept through my body all at one time where I was like, why? But also, you know what? Well, because on the one Fuck hand, yeah. on the one hand, it's kind of reductive that it's like, well, they're close. So therefore they've synced up. 
But on the other hand, he's casually talking about menstruation. And so I'm like, uh, you know, like, uh, all right, I'll let it go. Yeah. Because I'm also like, you know, here's the thing. Like, women have had to keep all this stuff so secret and to themselves, and that's bullshit. Because I'm like, if men had periods, we'd hear about it every five seconds. They'd yes. be, like, bragging about their flow and shit. Yes. So I'm like, you know. This is another thing I really liked about The Last of Us show. Is was that, that they casually like, mentioned two it. times... There's just kind of casual passing like, yeah, and people still have periods in the apocalypse and you have to fucking deal with that. You do have to deal with that. You do have to deal with that. And that's just that's just the yeah. reality of the situation. It's just there. Yeah. You know? My least favorite thing about apocalypse shows is that the women find time to shave their arms while they're running from zombies. It is funny. Their armpits. And like, you know what would be the you know what? I have a minor inconvenience and that's the first thing to go. <laughs> Elaine goes, Brigitte. By spring, I want the guards to be an army equal to anything ten houses can put in the field. Impossible to achieve, likely, but just trying meant keeping the mercenaries who signed now and finding more. Signing every man who showed the least inclination. Light, what a foul tangle. And Dylan chokes on her wine. And Brigitte yeah. goes, oh, burn me, Elaine. You can't... I'm an archer, not a general. That's all I've ever been. Don't you understand yet? I just did what I had to do. What circumstances forced on me? Anyway, I'm not her anymore. I'm just me. And and then she's like, I should probably stop. Yeah, you should stop talking. <laughs> They're not supposed to know that you've come back from the dead. That yeah. does scare people, I think. So how's Brigitte then? She's stressing. She's having a bad she's time. She's a little embarrassed. She's stressing. Yeah. Elaine's like stressing because she's stressing. And yeah. Dylan's looking at both of them like, what did I miss? What is going on? So Dylan is like, don't increase the guard that much people will freak out and elaine kind of goes yeah they should be freaked out mm -hmm. i'm gonna win i have three declared challengers and maybe one not declared she made herself meet dialin's gaze by herself aramilla is negligible but nason has joined house karen to her and whether or not he's sane his support means she must be considered Nian and Elenia are imprisoned. Their armsmen are not. Nian's people may dither and argue until they find a leader, but Jared is high seat of Sarand, and he will take chances to feed his wife's ambition. House Baron and House Anshar flirt with both. As he should. <laughs> the best I can hope is that one goes with Sarand and one with Aron. Nineteen houses in Andor are strong enough that smaller houses will follow where they lead. Six are arrayed against me, and I have two. Six so far, and the light send she had to. She would not mention the three great houses that had all but declared for Dialin. At least Egwene. I mean, Dialin seems pretty dope, but... She seems dope, but she also knows that she could go, oh, fuck it, I want to be queen. I know. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know what's going on. It's that, okay, so Elaine's got two friends who are like, Elaine should be queen, but Robin did such a good job of like, tanking annihilating her more her reputation which really sucks that uh, the other houses are like eh do we want more of the same and so then wait can i can please I go go yeah so then uh, or you can read no 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 i'd okay. much rather hear your interpretation okay so dylan though has three houses that have basically been like i think dylan should have it and mm -hmm. she was like no i don't want it which is wise because honestly being in charge of a kingdom sounds horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I think being like the second biggest house is the perfect place to be. Probably. Right? Like being the second. Yeah, that would be the best place because you're not like actively making many of the decisions, but every now and then you get leaned on to like politically influence stuff. But most of the time you could just vibe. Yeah. And you're not in the like lower houses trying to claw your way to being second. You just have to maintain second. And maintaining second is way easier than getting to second. Yes. It's like in Mario Kart, there's no blue shells coming at you. There's no blue shells coming for first. No blue shells. Uh, for second. Yeah. First, absolutely. Blue shells flying yeah. everywhere. And everyone hates you. And all you have to do is second house is go, that's wrong. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, oh, second house. Ugh. Hell yeah. Incredible. We love them. You know, I feel like Second House is the place to be. She thinks about like Rand announcing, I'm going to give Elaine the throne was one of the worst things he could have possibly done. That's real. Absolute blunder. Lie chess and chess.com are quaking. 
this again, I feel like we're feeling the impact of Moraine not being around because she would have been like, that's a dumb you idea. dumb fuck. Don't you know anything about Andor at all? Like that's going to make Elaine look like a Nepo baby. The meanest crofter in Andor would shoulder his scythe to pull a puppet from the Lion Throne. I want to avoid Andoran killing Andoran if I can, Dylan. But succession or no succession, which apparently we should watch succession. It's a great show. Jared yes, is, I have heard that. Jared is ready to fight, even with Elenia locked away. Nian is ready to fight. Best to bring both women to Camelin as soon as possible. Too much chance of them slipping messages and orders out of Erengil. Aramilla is ready, with Nasin's men behind her. I've said that guy's name, that person's name, three different ways. To them, this is a succession. And the only way to stop them from fighting is to be so strong they don't dare. If Brigitte can build the guards into an army by spring, well and good. Because if I don't have an army before then, I will have need of one. And if that isn't enough, remember the Shan Chan. They won't be satisfied with Tenchiko and Ebudar. They want everything. I won't let them have Andor Dylan any more than I'll let Aramilla. Thunder roared overhead. That's real. Yeah. That's real. She's really thinking... And maybe we could send out like an email blast about that being like, hey, I'm not building my army because I'm being sketch. I'm building my army because the Shan Chan will come here and we will be fucked if we don't have We've an army. We've got some bigger problems. Also, I think if we're in fighting, that's going to be really dumb because then they're going to be able to pick us apart easily. So maybe yes. we all just realize that like just because my mom had her tits out doesn't mean she wasn't a good ruler. I think it's really rude that Robin was able to undo like decades of her ruling, right? How long had she been in charge? Like a decade? 20 years. 20 years, and she did a really good job for the most part, right? Yeah, I uh, mean, 20-ish years. I mean, there were some people who were against her, right? But who's perfect? There was a lot of dissent at the end. You remember in book one with the red sashes and the white sashes? Yeah, I know that. I know that. But yeah. but, that, but I otherwise, think, she'd been doing a pretty good job, right? Yeah, and that was mostly, I think, think because of the white cloaks and because people didn't yeah, like her association the with the tower cloaks. specifically. Yeah, it wasn't Morghese's fault. It was that they didn't think Morghese should be hanging out with the white tower. Right, but consider also if that was the political discourse a year and a half ago, her daughter just showed up. Her daughter is a powerful channeler. With, I don't see a problem. With strong ties to the I, white tower. I don't see a problem. Well, here's my thing. Here's my thing. You know what? In the time of the Sean Chan coming, you're going to need a powerful channeler. I Yeah, that's true. But I don't think a lot of people believe in the Sean Chan. I think a lot of people think it's bullshit or it's just like, yeah, whatever. You know, where there's smoke, there's fire, though. I, that's how I feel. Like, I don't know. I mean, I guess, you know, you don't want to believe every conspiracy theory, right? But some things usually have some kind of grain of truth to them. I don't know. What's Brigitte's solution? What's Brigitte's solution? Yeah. To... The lack of army? Like, how how are we going to handle, like, because Brigitte is like, I cannot lead a fucking army. Yeah, she you says, can. I am not a general. I'm an archer. Yeah. I have never been a general. You're a hero of the horn. Just, you know what? And you're a hero of the horny, thanks to the Grinwall Cups. Yes. So, um, just do it. <laughs> what's what's her solution, though? You're just experiencing imposter syndrome, Brigitte. Gawain, Brigitte said oh, suddenly. Oh, stop. When he comes, he'll take command. He'll Ew. be your first prince of the sword. He's the dumbest fuck in the books. And Elaine goes, mother's milk in a cup. Yeah, that she understands that Gowan would be really shit at this job. And she basically dropped the C word. That is apparently like the worst curse. Yes. Now, It's listen. that one and then sheep swallop and bloody buttered onions. Could we talk about the fact that... Uh, the worst swear in the world has to do with breast milk. We could. We could talk about that. But fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my look, here's what I'll say about it briefly. My interpretation of it is that you're putting breast milk in a cup and then handing it to an unsuspecting person. To drink? To drink. I mean, I guess. Okay. Okay. If you're like giving it to someone to drink as like a human. Like as, an as, adult like, a, as like a prank. Being, as like a, as like a. You're drinking this and I know what. Yeah, don't give that to unsuspecting no. people. That is kind of a rude thing to do. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, I kind of see the, the that's, logic. That's the only way I can. Because I'm otherwise, otherwise, I'm like, why is it so bad to say, you know, breast milk? Breast milk. It's just, a, it's a fluid. Well, that's my whole thing. Again, I was like, fuck that. But I'm like, you know, when you're seeing people like breastfeeding in public, like that's not a sexual thing. That's just them like feeding their kid. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, I see. I misunderstood. That's why I was like, why is that vulgar? 
Oh, okay. Because some people have like weird things about that. Oh, like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Relax. No. Relax. But I, I'm not saying Robert Jordan did. I was just like, side eye. Bombastic <laughs> side eye, as they say on TikTok. So she goes, yes, he will, Birgitta, when he comes. And she's like, I hope Gowan gets here soon. Haven't, haven't heard from him in a while, and nor have we. And hasn't that been an experience? It's a piece unlike any I've ever known in my life. <laughs> I don't want to know where that kid is. Though I did say in bingo that we're going to find out where that kid you is. did. And then they mentioned him. They did. Because I wrote all of this in advance. And I was like, you know who has been kind of absentee recently is Elaine's very troublesome brothers. Yes. And I feel like that they've been on ice because her succession thing has been on ice. That would make sense. So then the door gets kicked open. Who comes in? Not Gawain. Not Gawain. Who is it? Uh... Oh, it's the sea folk. It's the lady. sea folk. Yay, we love that. What is this conversation? <sighs> she's like, I we you promised us 20 teachers and you gave us one. What the fuck? And she's like, I kind of have a lot going on right now. That's kind of a low priority task for me. Yeah, and they're like, there is no higher priority than this. There is none. I've had bosses like that, where it's like, I have like 45 things to do, but every task is high priority. And I'm like, y'all, it cannot all be high priority. Like, we have to pick. I only have yeah. so many hours in a day, and I refuse to work more than like the allotted yeah. amount of time that I have to work. And the sea folk, the two sea folk women who come in are like kind of shouldering each other. The, it's it's Renaila and Zaida. And Zyda keeps on being like, sit down, Renaila, I got this. You're just the wind finder and I'm the other And the captain role. or whatever. I forget exactly what her. Wave mistress of Clan Catalar and ambassador from the mistress of the ships to Rand. Well, that does sound important. But yeah, but, but Renaila is... But I'm in the middle of a succession crisis. Renaila is wind finder to Nesta Dinrias, two moons, mistress of the ships. Yeah. Well, until I'm queen, I don't have the power to do shit. Yeah. So give me a sec. And Marilly comes in and she's doing bad. And, the, you know, the, the sea folk are like, hey, chump, where's our fucking indentured servant teachers at? Give them to us now. Well, they're not exactly signing up. And uh, this is my thing. I'm like, you want them? Make it like a fun thing to do. Uh -huh. di di like they get freaking Twizzlers every day. Dylan is like, maybe you should shut the fuck up. And not be an asshole to the future queen. Maybe like, you should just stop being assholes. Truly, this couldn't. This doesn't matter. Here's how I would recruit the Aes Sedai to be in the 20. I'd be like, okay, we will treat you like super, super well. You'll get like all kinds of great accommodations. We'll treat you awesome. Uh, you won't have to buy your own pencils like teachers in the U.S. do. And <sighs> not only that, but you get a free t-shirt. Free t-shirt. I'll get anybody. I would do so much for a free t-shirt. We love a free t-shirt. We love a free t-shirt in this house. So yeah, Dylan is like, sit down. And Renaila goes, you say the bargain will be met? So you stand surety. No, there will be room to dangle you by your ankles in the rigging as well. If anxiety is like, shut up, Renaila. Honestly. So Elaine walks up to, oh, I forgot also. When the sea folk walked in, Dylan gets like prissy. And like goes for her snuff box because, you know, I don't know, fuck prejudice that. or something. Fuck I don't know. That. Whatever. Um, Racist. Anyway, yeah. fuck that. And uh, and because uh, every culture in this book doesn't trust every other culture in this book. And Elaine goes, Nesta Din Reyes trusted we would fulfill the bargain or she never would have agreed to it. You have regained the bowl of the winds, but assembling 19 more sisters to join you requires time. I know you worry about the ships that were at Abu Dar when the Sean Chan came. Have Renaila make a gateway to Tyr. There are hundreds of Atha Amir vessels there. Every report said so. You can learn what they know and rejoin your people. They'll have need of you against the Sean Chan. And she would be rid of them. The other sisters will be sent to you as soon as can be arranged. And Marilly is like, please, please don't leave me alone with them. Please, please don't do that. I'm having a horrible time. And Zayda goes... I wish that weren't true. Right... Fuck that. And anyway. Zaida's like, no, no, I'm gonna stick around in case Rand comes back. And Renaila's gonna stick around. He ain't coming back. He's bopping with men all around. There are five Aes Sedai here in your palace, counting yourself. Perhaps some of you might teach. I'm not gonna fucking... Oh, yeah, let me sign up for that. That seems like a really fucking fun job. Marilla Lee is like, hell yeah, that's that's good. Let's do... Please, 
give me a break. Please, can we do that? And Elaine goes, something may be worked out if the light pleases. For no more than a few hours at a day, you understand. When they have time. And then Zaida, like, touches her her lips with her hand and goes, and she's like, it is agreed under the light. And Elaine is like, we were bantering. Why did you have to make this formal? We were chatting. You can't just do that. Why are you here in this book? What are you doing? <laughs> Being a nuisance. <laughs> Literally everyone is just being a nuisance. And here's my thing. It would be fine if they were being a nuisance and I knew why they were being a nuisance, but I don't understand why they're being a nuisance. So it's just annoying. It's a little annoying. Like, you know, if they were like, I'm being a nuisance because our culture has been like really fucked over. But like if we understood any aspect of why they might be being a nuisance, I'd be like, wow, what an interesting cultural exchange. But right now, I don't know anything about shit. And so I'm just annoyed. And I'm like, get the fuck over it and get in line. There's a lot of fucking priorities that are happening and the apocalypse is around the corner. I'm especially because like the Rand's thing with the sea folk was like, hey, I need y'all to be the water taxi. That's it. Just please just be the water taxi. They're just water taxis. With the Aiel, he was like, I'm going to use you and you're all going to die. And with okay. that, they got a very relatively <laughs> easy job. And they were like, we're going to negotiate. And the IEO were just like, okay, right. I guess the apocalypse is coming. So we got to do it. I guess they maybe they should have taken lessons from the sea folk. Or the other way around. The other I mean, way. both. Somewhere, yes. Meet in the middle. Meet in the middle. I don't know. Like, like be a little bit self-preservation-y, but also kind of go like a little like, hey, you know, we're kind of giving you a lot. Can you give us something back? Yeah. But at the same time, or just, you know, remember that we helped you when, you know, the end times come. Um, but with them, it's like, hey, can I just remind you that it's the fucking apocalypse? And, you know, we need to kind of get our shit together. And maybe you having 20 teachers is not the priority at this particular moment in time. You know, could be. I just want to, like, clunk their heads together a little bit. So, uh, Rini Harfer comes in with the announcement that Mazrum Time is here. And in the interest... Oh, speaking of people I want to clunk heads... <laughs> In the interest of getting an episode out this and next week, uh, we're going to stop here, actually. Cliffhanger. So, uh, thanks for listening, everyone. I bet Mazrum Tayyum is super cool. He's not. Nope. Uh, we have social media. If you want to know what we've got going on, it's linked below. We also have a Patreon if you want to support us that way. It's patreon.com slash wheeltakes. And you can always leave us a rating and a review, which helps a lot. Other than that, anything else, Sally? <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you again for listening. This was Wheel Takes with Allie and Gus. Music by Alexander Nakarada. Mm-hmm.